my name is Madison Lopez. I'm from the United States. I'm a missionary with YWAM Harpenden, and today I'm here to talk to you about the everlasting love of God. Romans 8, 37 through 39 says this, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Death, life, angels, rulers, present things, future things, powers, height, depth, anything else in all of creation, and not a single thing of it can separate you from the love of God. Have you ever felt entirely unworthy? cast aside, unable to measure up, unable to even be worth considered for the team or for a position or for the love of God. Today, I want to tell you that that feeling is wrong and that feeling is a lie. God's love extends to all of us. And the thing about it is that there's nothing that we could do to earn it and there's nothing that we could do to deserve it but it is an open invitation for all of us. The thing about God's love is that we have to embrace it. Have you ever worked really hard for something, maybe a title, a position and job, an award at school, maybe in your athletic club? I don't know. There's something you wanted to work really hard towards just to measure up just to win. And then maybe you have it for a second. Maybe you do win, but then it's taken away from you to be given to the next person who did just as good of a job. Or maybe you think it was unfair. Maybe they didn't do as good of a job as you did, but somehow it's still passed on to the next person. And you're left feeling a bit low, a bit without purpose. See, the love of God can never be taken away from us, no matter how hard we work no matter how hard we don't work. The love of God is for us and for every individual as long as we embrace it. Like I said earlier, because we can't earn it or deserve it, it is a gift freely given to us that we must accept, that we must open up our hearts to. Romans 8, 31 through 32 says this, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Our father gave up his only son so that we could be pulled in to his love, that we may be made alive in his love. Could you imagine sacrificing the greatest thing in your life? just on behalf of another person. That's what God did for us. So whether you think you're unworthy, that you didn't work hard enough, or that you constantly have to be working in order to earn this, whatever the lies of the world have told you, it is entirely untrue. Because the reality of this love that we have been given as a gift is that it is our identity. It is who we are. And God created us not having to work towards our identity, but that we would be made whole in His image. God sacrificed His Son willingly that we may come alive in His love. The thing about His love is that it awakens. The thing about lies is that it shames. Shame Shame isn't real. That feeling that you may have that says, no, I'd just rather not be paid attention to, or no, I'll go. Maybe you've be, been a Christian your whole life, or maybe you're just now coming to know the Lord, and you have a past that you can't get over. Or maybe you've been really good all your life, but you just still don't feel adequate enough. Whatever the story is, there is a vast list that is given here in Romans that says nothing could count you out from that love. 
nothing is going to put you aside and say, sorry, you can't have that love. Sorry, you can't be made alive. You can't be made perfect. Because there is no shame or condemnation in Christ Jesus. There's an open invitation to be made alive. A lot of the times in the Western society of Christianity, we do our one or two times a week at church. We, we go on Sunday, we hear a great sermon, we feel energized, we feel encouraged, and then we go into the week. But the reality is maybe the next morning we wake up feeling anxious or we wake up feeling depressed, or we wake up full of shame, saying, oh, it was so good on Sunday. God was so close, but now he's so far from me. In, in my daily life or my daily job, it's just too much for God to understand, or there's no way I could possibly pull God into this. But the reality is, his love is all-encompassing, and it's with you the next day. It's with you every day that you wake up, if you choose to embrace it. Or even if you don't choose to embrace it, He's there and He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you to open up your eyes to a love that awakens and a love that transforms everything about your life. Shame is a liar and there's absolutely nothing that could keep God from loving you. So why would you stop Him from loving you? Why would you hold back and say, no, 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 God, it's okay, you have too much, or even, no, 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 I'm too much, or my past is too much. The Lord sees it, and He says, no, you're set free, because I sacrificed my son so that you could live in love with me, and I'm in love with you. So today I want to ask you to open up your hearts to being made alive in His love, being set free in that love, letting that love transform. And you may think it is a distant thing or it's only for sacrificing or helping a neighbor or doing this, but the reality is God created you as an individual with so many different abilities, so many different things, so many good works, so many beautiful parts. And the Lord wants you to open up to all of that. He wants to tell you how he created you in love so that you don't have to wake up full of shame, so you don't have to wake up full of anxiety or ready to go to a job that you don't like. The reality is God created you for a purpose, to live knowing him, to live loving him, and to see his kingdom come. So if you choose to open up your heart and embrace that love, what comes with that is a life that won't always be easy, but is worth it because you get to be set free from lies that hold you down. You get to be set free from a shame that tells you you have to fall in line. You have to work really hard to earn the love that is given to you. Today, I want to ask you to ask the Lord what plans he has for your life, what goodness he created you in, what image is it that you reflect of him? Oh, <laughs>